before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. And we are his. We are his people. The sheep, the sheep of his pasture. His pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Praise his name. For the Lord is good. The Lord is good. And his love. And his love endures forever. His love endures forever. Give them another round of applause. And they put a lot of time into that, you know. They put a lot of work, and man, I appreciate all of them. I appreciate it. I love my church. I can't say that enough. I just am so amazed at you guys and your heart and your passion for, for the Lord and reaching people. And man, it's just absolutely amazing. I'm going to start a new series today called Authority Issues. Some of you are not going to like it, and I'm okay with that. But I'm trying to help us all. I'm trying to help us get to where we need to be. And uh, we're going to do four weeks of this. Today I want to talk about authority issues. I want to talk about authority issues. This is something that a lot of us, and I would say most of us, deal with. Uh, we have dealt with in life. And this is something that we need to get right individually. Authority issues. Sometimes we don't like authority in our life. But I want to kind of set it up because I'm going to talk about being under authority and how important it is to be under authority. Because in order to be who we need to be in Christ... We need to be under that which is over us so we can be over that which is under us. You go, I don't get that. <laughs> Trust me, four weeks, you're going to understand this, all right? <laughs> but we need to be under that which is over us so we can be over that which is under us. Could I get somebody to, uh, Joe, would you help me? There's an umbrella right around that little, in that little cubby hole. Would you get that and bring it up here? I forgot it. Thank you, Joe. Anyway, I'm going to use some illustration now. You, some of you, you say, well, opening umbrellas inside of a house is bad luck. Well, if you believe that, then you're worshiping the wrong God, all right? 
Nowhere in Scripture does it say, thank you, Joe, appreciate it. Nowhere in Scripture does it say, thou shalt not open an umbrella inside the church. All right, so I'm okay. We're all right. Just, you're going to be all right. Some of you are going, oh, this is killing me. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. All right. Anyway, we're going to talk about being under authority. You know, in a lot of areas of our life, we have authority. Some of it we like okay. Some of it we can't stand. Next, we're going to talk about responding to authority. Then we're going to talk about authority in the marriage. And then we're going to talk about God's authority in his word. But today, I want to just set it up and talk about being under the authority that God has put in our lives. A couple of weeks ago, I used this story, but I'm going to use it in a different way today. We talked about the prodigal son. We talked about how that... Uh, you know, lost things were found. But today I want to look at, set it up this way. In this story, you notice that the son is under the father's authority. You know, he's under that. But then he gets rebellious. He gets this mentality of, you know, I don't like this anymore. I want to be my own person. You know, I don't like these rules and regulations. I want to get my inheritance, and I want to go and do my own thing, and I want to be my own boss, and I want to call my own shots. I want to do my own stuff. And so he left. And what did he do? He went out from under the authority that was over him, and he goes out, and, he, and, he, and once he gets out from under the authority, he makes a mess of his life. He loses everything, and now he's in the mud. He's in the, the, in the, in the pig slop. He's, in the, he's just made a huge mess of his life because he got out from under the authority that he was under. Now, somebody here today, you've gotten out from under the, or you never were under the authority that you need to be under. And I want to explain this because this is, this is huge. We need to be under the authority that God has for us. And that's in a, a lot of realms. We're going to talk about them. A lot of different areas of our life. Now, some of you go, I'm my own person. I'm going to do my own thing. You ain't going to tell me what to do. We'll see how that works for you, okay? I want to help you. The authority is there for a reason. The authority in your life is there on purpose. Whether you and I like it or not, it's there and I believe it's God-ordained, and how we respond is huge. But anyway, today we're going to talk about how that sometimes we get independent. I know I have. I've bucked authority. There's been times in my life when I didn't follow the authority that was placed over me, and I, and I rebelled, and that's not a good place to be. But sometimes we get that way. But a lot of times we'll say, I want to do my own thing. I want to call my own shots. I want to be my own person. I want to do what I want to do. Hey, I'm just, it's all about me. I want to do what feels good. I'm my own boss. Why do we have this mentality? Why do we have this rebellious vibe going on? It's interesting how the rebellion and uh, authority kind of comes around in different ways. Maybe it's at work. You've got that boss, and your boss is a jerk. You know it. Everybody else knows it. He's a jerk. He, he shows everybody else favoritism. He never says thank you to you. You know, he's just horrible. And you know it, everybody already knows it. You do a job, and he says, go back and do it again, you didn't get it right. You know, he's just a jerk. So what do you do? Do you say, okay, the heck with him. I'm out of here. You know, I'm, I'm not even going to do what he says anymore. I'm just going to, I'm going to rebel against his authority. Or do you say, he's my authority, and I'm going to do what he says. How do you respond to that? How do you respond to that? Maybe it's you go out to eat. You go to a restaurant, and, and the waitress you know, sees you and your spouse, and, and they say, um, uh, here's your table right here, sir. And you go, I like that table by the window over there. You know, that's a good view. Okay, can we sit over there? And then maybe she tells you, well, that seat is already reserved. Somebody's already reserved that seat. What do you do? What do you do? Do you bow up? Well, bless God, let me speak to the manager. <laughs> is that you? I don't like what she's telling me. Or do you just submit to the authority? that she's over you and she's going to put you where you need to go. All right, maybe it's your kids. <laughs> maybe it's your, your kids <laughs> play soccer. She's a great soccer player. And, 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 and she's the best soccer player in the world. Of course, that's, we as parents, that's what we always think, right? My kid's the greatest. You know, and, and that soccer coach just won't put her in. She deserves more playing time, but why won't he put her in? How do you handle it? Do you go up to that coach and you say, look, we need to have a talk. My kid's the best player. Why you need, Do you rebel the authority? Do you rebel against it? Or do you back up and say, okay, I respect their authority. They're the coach. They're the one in charge. How do you handle it? You see, these are authority issues. 
These are authority issues that are in our life. And how we deal with them is huge. You're 16 years old. And your parents set up something that's called a curfew. How do you handle that? Drama? Rebellion? How do you handle that, 16-year-old? Yeah, I'm going to rebel. Well, everybody else gets done, and I don't like this. Do you handle it that way? Or do you say, Mom, Dad, thank you for setting up the curfew. 1045. <laughs> like that's going to happen, yeah. <laughs> How do you handle these situations? How do you handle these, these situations where there's authority involved? All right, let's hit another one. The church. Ooh. Authority in the church. Maybe you pulled in the parking lot. Maybe the parking lot guys, I don't know exactly how they do it. Maybe they were pointing you and going, you park right down there. And you go, I ain't parking over there. I'm parking over here. <laughs> you got authority issues. I'm going to hit a whole bunch of you right now. Okay, ready? We have a thing called a communication card. <laughs> I won't have you raise your hand, but about 50% of you don't fill those things out. You got authority issues. I ain't doing that. They ain't telling me what to do. Like we're trying to be commando over you or something, you know. Do you know why we do Let me just stop for a second, because I think some of you are so confused about this. The community card is a, not a thing that we've created to be mean. You see, people call up and say, why ain't you call me? Because I've been sick. Do you feel like a communication card? No, I ain't feeling like one of those things. The communication card is there to help us to serve you. The communication card is so we can care for you. Man, if you're out one week, we're going to call you. You say, well, that's why I don't fill out the communication card. <laughs> We're doing our job. Well, I don't like being annoyed. You've got authority issues. If you would fill out a card, they wouldn't call you. <laughs> that's funny stuff, ain't it? About 50% of you, yeah, Angie's back going, yes, amen. Preach it, preacher. <laughs> She's over the communication cards. <laughs> They're there for a reason because we care about you. If you've never filled out a communication card, let me explain it to you. Fill it out, all right? Put your address, phone number. I ain't giving you my phone number. Put your phone number on there. Because if we, you ever need it, it's there, all right? And then if you fill that out, and then, and then each week you come after that, just put your name on there. It's kind of like an attendance thing. Well, I don't want them to know if I'm here or not. Well, it's the best way we as a church can care for you. If you'll just put your name on there, drop it as you're going. Well, that's a waste of money. Well, we don't think it is. So fill them out. And then when you're not there... Let's say you forget to fill one out, okay? All right? They're going to call you. But just have the mentality of, I'm thankful they're doing their job, you know? They're not trying to call you out and say, bless God, why aren't you at church? They're not saying that at all. We care about you. You might be sick. We want to pray. What? Do you know we've got a prayer team behind the scene that prays for you? When you go through situations and you have no idea, and you come back and you say, man, God answers prayers. Maybe it was because the prayer team was praying for you, you know? I believe in the power of prayer. So it's important you fill these out. So next week we're going to have 100%. Well, we won't have 100% because all of them are not here today. But all of you will fill out your communication card next week, and we'll do that. But it's, 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 it's authority issues. Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. I'm my own person. I'm going to do what I want to do. That's not the way God has it set up. God has authority for, four, for, for reasons. I'm going to give you four of them today toward the end of the message. message. There's the reasons why God puts authority in our lives, whether we like it or not. And we'll go over those here in just a few minutes. Authority issues. Let me finally answer the question. Why do we deal with them? Why do we have a tendency to do the pushback? Why do we want to just rebel against the authority that's over us? Lucifer, a.k.a. Satan. Hey, he was, he, he was you know, a leader in the, the heavenlies, the worship leader. You know, he, he, God is a God of love, but he had a choice to make. He has the freedom of choice just like you and I do. But Lucifer, in the very beginning, look, I want to I be the boss. I want to call the shots. I want to overcome God. I want to take his place. This worldly mindset of dog-eat-dog -dog world is not God's style. That's not the way God works. God has an order of authority in our lives, and it's there for a reason. And when you rebel against it, when you go against the authority that God has over you, you're going against what God wants for you. And that's Bible. Somebody says, well, you can't open an umbrella up in church. And I said, where is that in the Scripture? <laughs> we have to lean back to where the Bible says it. And if the Bible says it, then we've got to obey and we've got to do what God, because God's got an authority structure in our life. But, but Satan, he wanted to overtake God. Look in Isaiah 14 and verse 13. Look what he says. Look what the Bible says. 
I, Lucifer, will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. Rebellion. Authority issues. I want to be my own boss. I want to call my own shots. I want to do my own thing. I don't want nobody to tell me what to do. That's a dangerous place for you and I to be. That's not a good place for you and I to be. Authority is there for a reason. Look at 1 Samuel 15, verse 23. This is a New King James Version, but look at this. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Wow. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Witchcraft is partnering with the evil one. That's what it is. It's partnering with the evil one. What makes Satan Satan? He's the spirit of rebellion. That's what he is. He is the spirit of rebellion. And when we get rebellious and we do the pushback, that's what we're doing. We're allow, allowing the spirit of rebellion to work in us. And we don't want that. Authority issues. How do we deal with it? How do we process it? In this study, I hope that you realize that we all have some authority issues and that we'll deal with them. That we'll deal with them. Because I want you to be under the authority of God and exactly what he has for you in your life. I've been wanting to do this series on authority for a couple years now. And I feel like now's the right time to do it. For some reason, I don't know why, but now's the right time. So, if we have authority issues, ultimately we have an issue with God. That's just Bible. If we have a problem with authority, it's a problem, it's an issue with God. Adam and Eve, in the garden. They were there to protect the garden. They were there, you know, for a purpose and for a reason. And what happened? One day, well, well, some of us will say, well, Eve, she did it. <laughs> she ate of that daggone fruit that we weren't supposed to eat. It was her fault. The guys are going, yeah, that's right. It was her fault. <laughs> well, I beg to differ. I think because there's a, a, an authority in, in the relationship, and I think that falls on the man. And I think the finger should be pointed at her, but it should be pointed mostly at him because he is the authority figure. And we're going to talk about that in week three. I can't wait for the emails after that message, all right? <laughs> Delete, <laughs> delete, <laughs> delete. Anyway, there's authority. And, 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 and so Adam is really the one that was the problem. And he's an authority. He's the one that God is going to go through. There's authority. And it's the way God speaks. That's the way he leads. That's the way that he guides us. The children of Israel. The children of Israel. God sent Moses as the authority leader. He did miracles through Moses and through the whole situation. You know a lot of the stories, parting the Red Sea, providing food, water, you know, meeting all their needs all the way through, and he's the authority leader. And they get all the way over to the promised land, the promised land that God says, I'm, I've got for you. And right before they go into the promised land, what happens? God says, send 12 spies. Send them over there and look and see what's going on and tell them to come back and give a report. So they did. They sent the 12 spies over. They all came back, and what, 10 of them said, there ain't no way we can overtake those giants. Man, they're, they're, they're just too, they're, they're too powerful, they're too strong. There's no way we can go in and do that, except for Joshua and Caleb. And Joshua and Caleb says, we can take it. We can take it. But what happened? The people rebelled against the authority. Moses just said, all right. We, we, you know, and, and so it's all an uproar. Because they opposed the authority, they never got to go into the promised land, except for Joshua and Caleb. About 40 years later, they're the only two that got to go in there. Rebellion set in. They got out from the under God's protection. Jonah, you remember that? God said, Jonah, go to Nineveh. Jonah said, uh-uh, don't like that. They're mean people. They're angry. No, I ain't going there. He got on a cruise ship and went the opposite direction. Yeah, and he got on that cruise ship. And you know what that got him? Got him thrown off the ship, and, and he got a three-night stay yeah, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a whale bed. Yeah, he was like... He was, you know, spent three nights in that, in that, yeah, it was bad because he got out from under the authority of God in his life. You see, when we get out from under the authority of God in our life, whether you like it, whether I like it or not, when you get out from under that authority, you're looking to find yourself in a mess. Some of you say, you know, I keep hitting roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. Maybe there's some authority issues in your life and you've gotten out from under the authority of God. And because you've God, an alpha under the authority of God, that's why the mess is there. Why don't you do a U-turn and get back and get under the authority of God in your life? There's a common thread in all these stories. People often ask, okay, what's the result of rebellion? What's the result of, of getting out from under the authority? What happens, you know, when I do this, when I take, get away? Lucifer, he was a castaway from 
heaven. Right? Yeah. Adam and Eve, cast away from the Garden of Eden. The children of Israel, cast away from the Promised Land. Jonah, cast away from the boat. Gilligan, cast away. Just seeing if you listen, all right? But you see the common thing. They're cast away. They never got to see what God had planned for them. Their purpose was never fulfilled because they got out from under the authority of God. And church, if, if we're going to keep reaching people, if we're going to keep seeing life change happen, and if you want to see your purpose and your, the ultimate position you're supposed to have in your life, you've got to stay, and I've got to stay, under the authority God has placed for us, whether you like it or not. Can you imagine the world, how chaotic it would be if everybody just did their own thing? There was no authority structure. There was no, there was no authority because there are so many opinions right here in this room. If I said, what's everybody's opinion about doing this in the church? Lord, it would be chaos. You'd have people getting mad. You know, there's got to be some system of authority in our lives, in our church, in the workplace, in the family, in every aspect of our life. God is a genius, and he's got authority. But there's so many of us, you're rebelling against the authority because I'm my own person. I ain't doing what they tell me to do. I don't like them, so I'm not going to. And then you find yourself, you see, if God has allowed authority in your life, it's there for a reason, whether you like it or not. It's probably there to help shape and to mold you. And more of next week, we'll, we'll hit on this. We'll hit on how we respond to authority and the effects of that. But, but it's so important that you're under the authority of God because he is the author of authority. You see, his ways are different than the world's ways. The world's ways are dog-eat-dog world. Get all you can, do all you can do, climb as high as you can climb. God's, God's ways say if you want to be first, you've got to become last. Well, that don't make sense. <laughs> if you want to be a leader, you've got to be a good follower. Good leaders are not dictators. Good leaders enable other people to become all they can be in their giftedness. That's the way good leadership is. I don't know, you've probably got some leadership that they're bad. It's my way or the highway, you know, it's just the way it is. No. To be a good leader, you've got to be a good follower. And God's ways are different. It seems like you, you have to submit to things that you really don't want to. You say, well, what if they tell me that, that I've got to do something that's caused me to sin? We'll talk about that more in, in a, next week. We're going to talk about that more. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a lot of times leaders tell you to do things you just don't want to do. It's not really leading you to sin or leading you to do something wrong. The Bible says that God is the author of authority. You see, even in the Trinity, you see authority. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, right? They're equal. They're, they're all equal in one, one sense. They're all equal in form, but they're different in functions. You see, God the Father, you see, God the Son... It's kind of under the God the Father. He, he obeys Him. And then the Holy Spirit is kind of submissive to the Son. So there's already some, some structure there in authority. In other words, God the Father, then the Son, the Holy Spirit is, listens to the Son. So it's some authority there, but they're all still in the same form. They're all one and equal, but they have different functions. So sometimes, whatever we are, in the, the links down the line, we're all equal, but there's a different position and different function that we have. And you may not like the function you have in that line right now, but we're still to obey the authority that is over us. When Jesus was living here on earth for 33 years, you know what he did? He obeyed and stayed under the authority of the Father, but he also stayed under the authority here on earth. Look what he says in Matthew 22 and verse 21. Jesus said this, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and give to God what is God's. In other words, you're to obey the law of the land, but you also obey what God tells you to do. Apostle Paul, you know, he was his own person. He was Saul for a while, you know, and he was killing Christians and he was doing his own thing. You know, he, he, he was not under the authority of God until he met Jesus Christ one day. <laughs> and, and Jesus changed his life. And once Jesus changed his life, he realized the position of authority. And he started understanding that. He wrote 75% of the New Testament Paul did. He wrote a lot of it, but he started understanding it was all about God, and it was about being under the authority of God. Look at Romans 13, 1, because this is huge right here. These next verses I'm going to read to you. Romans 13, 1, look what Paul says here about authority. He said, everyone, now who does that include? Everyone must submit, well, that don't apply to me. 
that amazes me Christians, well, the rules don't really apply to me. I've been in church a long time. That's for the ones that's just getting started. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. You say, whoa, 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 wait a minute, Carl. That jerk at, at work, that jerk called a, birth, a boss, I'm supposed to be an authority to him? Yep. You're supposed to be under that jerk, under his authority. If he's your boss... You're to be under his authority. That, you mean that waitress that won't let me sit where I want to sit? Yeah, you're under her authority. That's right. That soccer coach that won't play my kid? Yep. Him too. You're under the authority. The parents that give me that curfew? Yep. You're under that authority. That parking guy at church? Yeah, <laughs> you're under his authority. You're under the authority that's placed before you. Each time we rebel, listen to this, each time we rebel, it's causing a bigger gap between us and God causing a bigger gap between us and God. Every time we rebel. Now, some of us don't rebel a lot. And there's some of you rebel all the time. <laughs> That's your life is rebelling. I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to be mean. We need to get under the authority that God has put over us because each time we rebel, it pushes us farther away from Him. We need to get under those things that God has put over us so that we can get over those things that God has under us. And we will never know what's under us and the position that God has for us to be a leader over somebody else until we get under the authority that's over us. I want to give you a few things. Give you a few things. Now, I'm going to hit some of these umbrellas, so don't y'all laugh, okay? But I want to give you a few things. I'm going to give you an object lesson here about authority. There's four things, and we're going to wrap it up. Four things. What authority does in your life. Four things that it gives you. You know, why would God, maybe you say, why would God put authority over me? That just sounds like a killjoy. Why would he want to do that, man? No, that sounds cruel. He does it for some reasons. And I want us to understand that. Because you might be saying, that boss is a jerk. I ain't going back in tomorrow and being under his authority. I'm, going to rebel. I'm not going to do what he tells me to do. Watch. Number one, it provides us protection. You see, authority provides us protection, whether you realize it or not. It's not about dominance. It's about protection. He knows when you're under authority, you're protected you're empowered. Yeah, these things are going to happen in your life when you're under his authority. That's why he's there. He's not there to make your life miserable. He's there to shape you. He's there to mold you. He, and the way you respond to authority is huge. It's huge. Now, here in this umbrella, you know, lies some things that I want, I want to share. Now, I'm not an umbrella guy. I just never have been. I don't carry an umbrella around with me. Um, just, I don't have one. My wife likes an umbrella when it rains. Now, I have been pounded, <laughs> and I have wished I've had an umbrella. I guess maybe because it's not masculine, maybe. I don't know. It's just, I just don't, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go to work and carry my umbrella. I just don't, I, that's just not me. <laughs> but the umbrella, without it, man, I get soaking wet. <laughs> I get so Sometimes if it hails, it's hailing down on me. It's pouring rain, and, and, and it causes me a lot of, of problems. I've walked into a building soaking wet, you know, getting ready to go into a meeting, hair just, just soaked and, and it, because I didn't have an umbrella. So really, you should carry an umbrella with you. But authority is all about the umbrella. And I want to give you this illustration because especially God's authority in our lives is huge. You can see, how, how would it be for me? Let's just say this is God's authority. All right, this is God's authority in our lives. We're under God's authority. Now, how, how stupid would it be if, if I were out in the rain, right, and it's pouring down rain, I'm going, why am I getting so wet? Oh, I'm getting pounded by this hail. Why is this happening to me? Now I'm going to be drenched. And you look at me, dude, are you lost your mind? Get under the umbrella, right? That's what you would tell me. Just get under the umbrella. You see, and that's what I'm telling us today. You're getting pounded by the things in, in this life. You run into all these roadblocks. You're, you're being headstrong. You're trying to do the best you can. Maybe you're a good person, but you're rebelling. And you're not under the umbrella. And God says, I want you under my authority for your protection. You see, I've got it there to protect you. I've got it there to help you, not to be mean to you. And God wants us underneath it. Because when we're not underneath it, there's elements in this world that can tear our lives up and make us a mess. And when this happens, you know, we get in situations that it's just bad. And God says, just stay under my protection because I don't want you to live in a mess. Some of you right now, you know what I'm talking about because your life's a mess. There's an authority issue in your life and you just ignored it. 
And you go, wow. You go, wow. Authority issues. Come underneath God's authority. The church is God's authority. And we're to be underneath the protection of the church. You know, God's way of, of reaching this world is that he wants believers to come together and to unite together and serve side by side and submit yourselves to one another and serve one another, just like Jesus washed the feet of the disciples and he washed their feet and he, and he showed them his love and, and, and he submitted himself. And even though he's the King of kings and Lord of lords, he's showing us how that we're to be submissive. But he wants us to do life together. He wants us to serve together in the church. He wants us to, you know, to, to, to do life together in the church. He wants us to worship corporately together in the church. Our lives should revolve around the church. It should. And it's, it's, a lot of you, that's what it is. But I've seen a lot of times where people, they run into maybe a monetarily advantage and they gain some, some money. And now they go buy the beach house or they go buy the lake house or they go buy that camper. There's nothing wrong with any of these things if you've got these. But now they're always going to this looking for the fun time, looking for the excitement and looking for the joy. And, and they get out from under the, the, the authority of God in the church. And now they're outside of church and they're never in church. And the next thing you know, I see it all the time. They start having problems in their marriage. They're wondering why their kids are getting rebellious. And they're wondering why, you know, the things are happening that are happening. And I'm telling you why. Because you got out from under God's authority of the church in your life. We should make church a priority, not just something to do if we don't have anything else to do. It's there for a purpose. And we're to come together. And we're to worship together. It's for our protection. Because when we're not, the temptations come. The things in life of this world come that we can't handle, so we need to be under God's protection. Let me give you a second one real quick. These last three are going to be good pretty quick. Stay with me. It's for our protection, but also it accelerates my maturity. Now, I don't know how, about you, but I want to become a mature Christ follower. I want to continue to mature. I want to continue to grow. I want to continue to learn. I want to continue to be a sold-out believer. But it's all about submission. It's all about submission. Listen to me. We're to submit to him. Whatever he wants me to do. Whatever God. I'm, I'm your hands and feet. You know, God has placed authority figures in our lives. I look back in my life, and I think about all the people in my life. There were some teachers. There was this one, this one teacher that, I won't say the subject because if she sees this, she'll know I'm talking about her. But there was this one teacher. She pushed me. She pushed me. She irritated me sometimes. and It, it was a subject that I was strong at. And she kept pushing me. And, and if I made a bad grade, she's like, you can do better than that. She irritated me and just got right there under my skin. And that subject ended up being by far my best subject in school. And I got, I was in the top of my class in that subject. And I was actually on a team that we competed in stuff in that subject. You see, I advanced. I look back in hindsight now. I could have said, I don't like that teacher. She's mean. Give me another teacher. You see, I didn't like that authority that was over me. But because I submitted to it and stayed with it and allowed it, I see now I've become a better person because of it. I've had coaches. I lost my dad when I was eight years old. And I've had coaches in my life. And for those of you that are coaches, you, you take heed to this because I'll never forget it. I had coaches that, that just took me in and, and did things even outside of the, the, the ball playing. And, and, and I remember one guy took me fishing. One guy took me, took me hunting. And I didn't get a gun, but I, he let me go with him anyway. And... I got to, but I'll never will forget this. You know, these figures in my life still impacted me into who I am today. You see, sometimes you like the authority, sometimes you don't like the authority. But if God's got it there, it's there for a reason. And it's probably there to shape us and to mold us and to be in the people that we're supposed to be. And it's going to mature us. Let me give you the third one. The third one. It gives me a heightened sense of uniqueness. It helps me to realize how unique that I am. I really am. It's amazing how so many people see their self-esteem the wrong way. A lot of people, it's just amazing how that their self-esteem, who they are, is not the way it should be. They see it like this. They see it horizontal. They're out from under the authority of God. Oh, she says I'm like this. She says I'm ugly. She says that dress doesn't look good. He says, I'm a, I'm a loser, so I must be a loser. And you're now looking at all what he said, she said, and you're all worried about what everybody says, and that's who I really am. 
And you're getting pounded by the rain, and, and right here's the authority you should be under. You can't even look up at the authority of God because you're getting pounded, and now you're believing who you are because of what everybody's telling you you are. But you see, you need to have a vertical view of it. You need to have a vertical view. When you're under God's authority, so you can look up. And you can see who you are really in God, that you're not a piece of junk, that you're wonderfully crafted and wonderfully made, and you are who God created you to be, and you're a beautiful person. But it's amazing to me how self-esteem is resolved right here. Self-esteem is because you're not under the authority of God and who he says you are. You're under the authority of the world and who they say you are. Get under the authority of God. And then the last one, it gives me a holistic approach to worship. What is worship? Worship is 24-7. It's who we are. It's every decision we make. Is when you're walking with God, hey, every decision you make is based on what God wants you to do. But if you're here, you're not making godly decisions. It's amazing to me how that sometimes, you know, we as a guy will say, yeah, I'm under the authority of God. These Christian guys, we're all hanging out, and it's all good, you know. Well, when I'm hanging out with these guys over here, <laughs> It's a different story. Yeah, we talk different. We do different things then. You know, it's not the same thing. Are you girls? Yeah, I'm with these Christian girls. You know, I'm with, uh, with all these, you know, good girls and stuff, and I got the authority of God over me. But these girls over here, <laughs> yeah. we're going to go out and have some fun. Yeah, uh-huh. The authority of God is not there then. It's amazing how our worship is just maybe on Sundays. Our worship is not 24-7, seven, seven days a week. You see, God wants us to be under His authority in every aspect of your life. Even with that jerk boss. Even in that relationship. You say, well, what happens when the authority tells me to do something sinful? That's not what I'm talking about. Because the majority, the majority of situations where we buck authority is not causing you to sin. It's not causing you to do something against God's will. It's not. It's just you want to be your own boss. You want to pick and choose what you want to do. But let me tell you something. That authority that's in your life is there for a reason to make you a better person. You see, when we submit to authority, it's basically saying, God, I trust you. This person's in my life. What can I learn? Or how can I help teach this person? Because maybe this person that's in your life, they may, not, they may be clueless that they're there under God's authority. But whether they're there and they know it or not, God's using it. If He's allowing it, He's using it in your life some way. Submit to it. Submit to it. Submit to the law of the land. Pay your taxes. If you speed, pay the ticket. Don't get mad. It's the law of the land. We're to abide by it. In the church, submit to authority in the church. I believe there's authority there. I'm surrounded by some great leaders. I'm going to bring them up here in just a few moments. But I'm thankful for what God has placed in my life. But I believe that I have a big responsibility in the authority of the church. I have to make decisions. And some of them you may not like. You may not like that communication card. Well, let's just do it your way then, okay? No, I don't believe it works that way. I'm not going to say, let's do it your way. I'm going to say, this is the way I feel God leading us to do it. Let's just all get on board, you know? I believe that God's calling us to reach these race fans. Show them, well, I think you should help more in the computer with people that need money for food and well, I think we should help them too, but we're going to reach those that are far from God. We're going to show them God's love. That's what Jesus did. Stay under His authority at work. Don't get mad and say, I've seen this. I don't like my boss. He's a jerk. I quit. Walk out, now you ain't got no job. Now your family hurts from it. Why, well, he was a jerk. God had him there for a reason. Now you're going to miss what you were supposed to learn. Stay under the authority of God, whether you like it or not. Stay under the authority. Maybe you've never been under the authority of Jesus. 
me tell you something. He loves you. He loves you so much. Maybe today is a time that you need to realize that you need to get under the authority of God and that comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ. And if that's you, man, I'm telling you, that's what you need. You need a relationship with Jesus Christ. He'll wash away your sins. And for some of you, that's what you need today. Your quick homework. And then we're going to wrap it up. Quick homework for each and every one of you. This week, I want you to really ask yourself, where in my life am I really not under the authority of God? Where is it? You see, there's a link of command. And you're one of those links. And wherever you fall, you need to follow the authority that God over, has over you. I don't care where it is. You say, well, my husband, you know, we'll get into marriage again in week three. The husband is the authority in the home. That's Bible. Well, my husband doesn't come to church. My husband, you know, doesn't do this. I'm not talking about if your husband makes you sin or if he beats you or something like that. I'm talking about, you know, you're under his authority. Well, I'm a Christian. He's not. Well, you're still under his authority. Maybe that might lead him to Christ. Maybe it's, I didn't mean to say that, but maybe that's you and your husband's not in church. And maybe that's what you need to do. Just submit to authority and show God's love and be under the authority. If you're doing the pushback, do a U-turn. If you don't know Christ, I pray today you'll come to know Christ as Lord and Savior. Let's all bow your heads. Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for your word and for the structure you have set up. You've got a plan and authority in our lives. Lord, let, don't let us buck it, but let us receive it, realizing you're trying to do something in our life and you want to do something in our life. And God, I pray for every person here, including myself. I have issues here as well. And Lord, I just want all of us to realize what you're doing. Help us to unite as a church family. Help us to be able to agree to disagree and, and just watch you work. Not be so concerned about what we want as individuals. We've got what we need, and that's a relationship with you. But what we need is a church that's full of believers that are submitted under your authority. And God, what you'll do is just, it'll be amazing. You'll mold us and shape us and we can become the ultimate people and have the purpose that you have for us in our lives. Lord, minister, continue to minister in our lives. Heads bowed and eyes are closed. No one's looking around. Right now, if you've got that rebellious in you and, and you, you realize that, man, just pray right now. Just call out to God and say, God, I hear you loud and clear. I'm going to be obedient. I want to be submissive to the authority you put in my life. I know it's there for a reason, and I'm going to obey. But maybe you're here and you don't know Christ as Lord and Savior. You need to submit to him today. Jesus died on a cross so your sins could be forgiven. He loves you. He cares about you. He designed you. You are a unique person. And if you really come to realize that you're wired to submit to him, because he created you that way. So why don't you just submit to him? Maybe you've tried your own way and you are in a mess and you're searching, you're searching for Jesus. He loves you no matter what and that's why he died on a cross so your sins could be forgiven. And he says that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So what must I do? The Bible says you're to confess your sin. You're to realize your sin problem we're all sinners, the Bible says, and it separates us from God. That's why Jesus died, so that our sins could be forgiven. He's the ultimate sacrifice. And if you will ask him to forgive you of your sin today, he will. He'll forgive you. And you can get under the umbrella of his authority. And watch what he does in your life. He's going to shape you and mold you into the person you're supposed to, that you were created to be in the first place. I don't know about you, but I want, I want that in my life. I want him to shape me and mold me. I want to learn. I want to mature. I want to grow. That should be your desire as well. It should be all of our desires. If you're here and you say, Pastor Carl, I don't know Christ as Lord and Savior. I realize I need to submit to Jesus. I'm going to pray right now. Just pray to God. Just pray to him. But I'm just going to help you, kind of coach you, pray in here. What you, what you need to do, you need to ask him to forgive you of your sins. Say, Dear Jesus, right now, Dear Jesus, I submit to you. I realize I need to be under your authority. 
I realize my sin separates me from God. Jesus, I believe you died on a cross so my sins could be forgiven. And right now, I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I place my faith in you. I submit my life to you. I surrender. I'm yours. I want to be under your protection. I want to be under your authority. Heads bowed and eyes are closed. No one's looking around. Maybe that's why you're here today. You said, Pastor, I prayed and I asked him. I want to submit to you and I ask him to forgive me of my sins. I mean it with all my heart. No one's looking around. I don't want to embarrass you. Can I rejoice with you? You say, Pastor, that's me. I want you to slip your hand up right now. Don't even hesitate. Just slip it up. Can I rejoice with you? Thank you for that one right there. Somebody else. I say, Pastor, that's me. That one's my right. Thank you for that one. Amen. Amen. Submitting. Amen. We kind of get excited when people make decisions because one day Christ forgave us and we remember what it felt like. And we're so happy for you. Whether you raised your hand or not, we're excited for you for realizing you need to submit to him. You're now a child of God. Anybody, and if you're watching on television, internet, if you've submitted to God today, and you're under his authority now, man, we're so happy for you. We praise God for, for you watching today because it was by his drawing that you were watching and now you know Christ as your Lord and Savior and now you've got what you need on this side of eternity. Plus, you've got what you need when you step out into eternity and that's heaven. Father, we love you and I thank you so much. Lord, for you continuing to work at this place. God, for continuing to mold and shape us. And this issue we're talking over the next four weeks, God, I, I pray, God, that we just respond and we don't rebel. God, we realize the importance, the structure of authority that you have in our life is there for reasons that we need to submit to. Father, I am just rejoicing at these that have come today and now they're your child. They have submitted to you, God. They have asked you to forgive them of their sin, God. And only you can do that. Only you. And I thank you so much for that. God, we love you and praise you for what you're doing in our lives. We never take that for granted. And Lord, as we go out this week, and may we be your hands and may we be your feet. Cross paths with those that don't know you. And our light shines so they can see you working in our life. Father, thank you so much for all you do. For it's in Christ's name we pray. And all God's people said. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord our applause. Amen. If you receive Christ as Lord and Savior, can I get you to do one more thing? There is a communication card that I talked about. And fill it out with your name and maybe your contact and address. And on the back of it, it says, I received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Whether you raised your hand or not, if you received him this morning, would you fill that out? And when you're going out, there's some buckets. You just Everybody's placing their cards in there. And uh, if you didn't fill out a card, you get your hand smacked this morning. But anyway... If, no, just kidding. If, if, fill that card out and just and place it in the basket. And I'd like to get you a Bible or maybe some information to help you in your new walk with Christ. We're here to serve you and help you because we care about you. And we're glad you made this decision. Let's all stand to your feet. He is jealous for me. Love's like a hurricane, I am a tree Bending beneath the weight of His wind and mercy When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions Eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. How